Well, why don't, why don't we just start off with that notion of actually having five albums prior to this debut release that everybody thinks is your debut. Um, how did you wind up getting on to Eleven Seven? Um, it's an interesting story. Uh, like you mentioned, we did have five albums previous to this one. Um, and this album was actually a Kickstarter-funded, self-produced record that we did in the house that we all lived in. Um, and we released it uh, a year, released it independently a year before the label released it, which yeah. is kind of funny. Um, but the way it all came about was we released it um, with this, we still have this amazing manager, Will Hoffman, that was kind of showing it to people and uh you know really we're it seemed like the first few months of kind of regional touring on the record like we we're really like nothing was happening yeah. it's kind of it's kind of scary because we put like so much energy into it and we're all just like worn out from a decade of like busting ass and giving it our all yeah. uh but uh we're out on the west coast uh we're going to this big festival called aftershock and um literally on that trip 117 the label we're signed to now sent us a deal proposal like uh, we played a tiny awful showcase for them in LA uh, smallest stage we've ever played you know yeah. it's like no way anything's gonna come of that um, and they sent it like the next day so that was the first time we'd ever actually gotten to that point with a label um, and then a few days later we played uh, this big festival called Aftershock um, and that guy who puts on the festival is actually side stage watching the whole thing um, and we're the first band, actually the second band on the first day on the tiny stage. Right. And uh, that guy was just super blown away by everything, uh, so much so that a band dropped off the next day main stage at like 4 p.m. and he put us on. That's so, awesome. Yeah, so we cool. literally like overnight went to, you know, playing in front of 400 people to 15,000 people. And that really kind of set the music industry ablaze. Um, and that guy uh, that puts on the festivals, name's Danny Wimmer. He's actually one of our managers now, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we, we had several deal proposals come in after that festival, but ultimately we chose 11.7 because they just seemed totally the most passionate. Well, they like, pursued you and helped yeah. you, and that just seems like sort of a hand-in-glove fit there. So yeah. Why, why not take yeah. it, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, what makes this debut on 11.7 so different from your past five albums? Why do you think there's just some mojo on it that they saw and that fans seem to be catching on to? Yeah, uh, I don't know. You know, it's hard to say as the artist. I definitely know that uh, as, as, pe like, as people, like all the band members, we do... F we just feel differently now, like, I guess as human beings, like, more mature than we did with the previous records that we had done um, and you know songwriting so much more of like a maturation thing than necessarily a technical skill like sitting in my bedroom and playing bass or something right. like that so I don't know it it there's just something different about this record that was very different than anything we'd ever done and to all of us it just kind of felt like the time like like we'd matured as people uh, our show had matured to what it is now and I don't know just happened you know well, I haven't seen you yet I'm gonna see you today mm. but I understand your live show is quite kinetic like there's a lot of jumping around and high energy and yeah yeah there's a lot going on there's a uh, we put a lot of energy into uh, not just like being up there and playing our instruments but there are several very different like instrumental pieces uh, that I mean our singer used to be our drummer so we have two phenomenal drummers in the right. band and there's steel structures everywhere, uh, holding drums and things like that. It, I don't know. It's an interesting show. It's yeah. fun. How did that? How did that transition from you know someone stepping up from behind the kit? Three vocalists try and and leave for whatever reasons. And yeah. Like, well, you know, shit. I'm gonna do this. Like, how, how did that conversation even happen? Yeah, that was. I don't know. I remember we played. We actually played a show in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, uh, at Sammy Hagar's club, and. We are all out, like, partying that night, and Johnny and Mark shared a room together, and I don't know, Johnny was super hammered and <laughs> told Mark, like, you know, I'm going to sing for this band, because we knew we were about to fire the singer we had then. Right. And um, also interesting, both Johnny and I, we both actually kind of tried out for the singer role, but thank God he won. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a difficult transition, but Johnny's one of those guys that, is just super creative and incredibly driven and 
we never had a doubt that he was going to, I don't know, become an amazing vocalist. Because at first he wasn't. Right. He, you know, he could sing, but it wasn't, it didn't sound like he'd sang his whole life yeah. kind of thing. And it took about a year to get him comfortable on stage and to really get his voice in shape. But uh, I, f- I don't know. After that year, now he's just kind of on fire. Was there ever any discussion around him staying behind the kid and singing? Like turning the sort of the kid sideways so you could sort of both? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And it, we tried it at one gig. Uh, we actually won this Warp Tour Battle of the Bands back in, I think, 07. And we got flown to the Key Club and this to play like a big showcase. And they gave us like $30,000 worth of gear and stuff right, like right. that. And uh, we had just fired our singer right before they told us that we were playing that. And so the first and only show... And it's video recorded. Uh, first and only show that Johnny has ever sang from behind the drum kit was that show. So yeah, he did one show, one major show he sang and played from behind the kit. And what's good and bad about it? I mean, you must look at that footage and just go, well, you know, you pulled it off or... Well, yeah, I mean, I don't. it was just everything was compromised. Yeah. His drumming wasn't that good. He wasn't... His, he sounded fine, like, but he wasn't the... He wasn't a front man, and then there's the rest of us up front, awkward. That's the weird thing I, f- I feel like that would be about the drummer singers, that uh, without there being like a focal point at the front of the stage, yeah. I don't know, it's just kind of like, hey. There's a lot of like, bands that do it though, you know? There are, off, there are. And you know, some of them stay at the back, some of them like that sort of that side profile so you can see what they're doing while they're singing. Yeah, and, totally. I, I, don't, I don't doubt it could work. It was just definitely something I wasn't ready for. Um, you must have known that many listeners would assume that Nothing More was a new band. Um, did, do you perceive that there was a radical shift in your music from helping that, like having that crowdfunding happening and maybe a different energy while you're putting your material together? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I mean, it being, especially it being self-produced, uh, the yeah. previous album was self-produced as well, right. but um, I don't know, whenever you do things on your own, it... it and there being like years in between the two albums uh, it's just like inevitable that it's going to sound way different and that you know we're so ingrained in the recording process that uh, I don't know it's just a reflection of you there's not like a producer sitting there and like dampening all your feelings or like you know putting time limits on things like it really was just kind of this wild flowing project you know that took forever and (laughs) that will that will never be able to like we're we're never going to have that experience again uh, as far as years to make a follow yeah right I don't I I don't (laughs) think I don't think 11.7 will let us but it it was also just like a really crazy time in all of our lives like a lot of uh, just a lot of like tragedy and weird stuff happened like I think like all of us broke up with like long term relationships and you know I don't know. That's just fodder for good songwriting. It is, yeah, it is, it is. I totally agree, yeah. I, yeah, life's so stable now, it's like, man, what am I going to have to dr- drum up something, you know? What um, what changed on the album when 11.7 got involved? Did, did, did anything at all about the music change? Uh, or remastering? No, or no, no, they didn't. They, That's uh, awesome. The only thing that changed was when we released it, we went all out and spent like three $3.50 per, like, unit which is about three times more than a normal cd cost so we could have this very custom like die cut yeah uh like booklet and so there, there's a couple thousand very limited editions of the record floating around out there that aren't how we sell them now but yeah, yeah they took off uh the album 17 tracks so they took off one of the instrumentals and then one of the songs and just left them on the uh the download version okay. so yeah didn't change the artwork didn't change anything is this your first heavy Montreal? It is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm ex- I mean, it's a little early to really have an opinion, I guess. But yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it's beautiful. Like, yeah. it, catering is phenomenal. Like that, you can always tell kind of by catering. Like yeah. that, I woke up and like went straight there, and I was just like, wow, like yeah. a fondue fountain, yeah. and you know, there's someone juicing for you. And the more I looked around, you know, there's a like a VIP like patio over this pond, and there's just light you know, intelligent light fixtures everywhere, and it's like, this. you can just tell this thing's going to erupt into a massive party later. This is one of the most European festivals you can get outside yeah. of Europe, really. It re- yeah, it really, it, and it really reminds me of Rock'em Ring, which we yeah. played last year. But yeah, it's 
everything about it is just phenomenal. I when love was, it. When was the first time you came up to Canada? Do you remember? Uh, it was August last year. Um, so you didn't get or here September. at all in your previous albums? That was all like, no, no. touring we, down in the States? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was really just regional okay. touring primarily. So yeah, we came to Toronto uh, last August or September and headlined a show. Crazy. It was good though. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you know, that's so weird. I mean, we're from San Antonio, so we're yeah. 100 miles from Mexico. Yeah, yeah, it's a different, much. totally different border crossing and experience up here. So. Now, the album technically came out in 2013, but was re released through 11 September mm -hmm. 2014. Um, where are you guys at now with um, talking about new material? Are you demoing anything? Uh, yeah, there's definitely some writing happening. Not very much like all of us together yeah. pounding away just because we've pretty much literally been on the road since last March yeah. um, nonstop. But yeah, come December, we're pulling off the road and it's just guns blazing to put out the next one. Any trepidation of that? Like it's going to be so it's different, right? They're going to be involved. It's not yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting. I have no idea what's going to happen, but <laughs> you know, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I have no idea. We haven't written in a while together, yeah. and like you said, yeah, they're involved. Yeah, like there's yeah. timelines, times money now, things like that. So I find that the singles that have been put forward on the album are. They're, I mean, they've, they've serviced the album well, and they've certainly worked. I'm curious if they're the songs that you would have picked to put out as this is a showpiece for our 17 song album. Yeah, it's really interesting because I would I would say so. And yeah. um, you know, when we got signed, there was no immediate plan to go to radio. Like the plan was to just tour and kind of build it organically from the ground up, kind of underground. And uh, I don't know. Then they went to the radio, and it just worked out really well it's but different, different beats going to radio too right and yeah like yeah totally and it, it's weird because like there are we did in some way focus on really focus like on the a blend of like progressive writing and also just really trying to make like as much sense to an audience as we can and we really like challenged ourselves with writing some simpler songs yeah. uh and what's funny is everyone thinks like, at least from our perspective, bands like us or how we used to be, it's like, oh, the simpler songs are the radio songs. And the songs that we wrote like that, none of them yeah. went to radio and there was zero talk of them ever going to radio. So it's it's really cool. Like my favorite song uh, after we had written everything and recorded it was This The Time and you know, I just never thought it'd be a radio song. I mean, the bridge of it's like the most complicated uh, odd time signature yeah. like drumming piece of music ever so yeah that's just funny it's curious that it it's, caught on yeah yeah it's cool though you know I think kind of gives us some hope yeah <laughs> gives the music industry in general you know just meaning you can I don't know some interesting things can still exist yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you don't have to sell your soul to Satan and <laughs> and play in 4-4 four, four all the time and talk about tits and ass so. yeah to me the, I mean, the, the tune that I keep humming when I play the album is first punch because mm. I like the chorus on it. It's, yeah. It's catchy, and that to me feels radio-esque. Yeah, right? that's exactly but, what we thought, you know, too. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah never, even, never even brought it up. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, finish off with one last one. Are you uh, are you guys gonna stick around and watch anything? Are you staying here right through the night, or do you have to get on the on the bus and uh, get down to? No, no, we have an easy drive tonight, so cool. we're gonna check out. Uh, we're playing at the same time as Extreme, and I really wanted to see them, yeah. but uh, definitely gonna see Meshuggah and Corn. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Alex is on fire is here as well. They are. So. But I don't, I don't today. I'm pretty sure they're today. Okay. If if they are today, I'll definitely check them out. So. Cool. Right yeah, on, man. Well, I appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks so I much. Today goes awesome. Yeah.